But it's that DNA replication. Sorry about that. Seems to be a little bit confusing today. Here we go. So, in this process, we are, there we go. So we're looking at, uh, remember the DNA is going to get replicated before the cell can divide. We're going to do the replication in the S phase of interphase. Um, <clears throat> and then we want to make strands that are identical in the process of mitosis. So we're looking to make then two identical copies or photocopies of not only the cell, but also two of the DNA in the brand new cells then. And this is going to be done in the S phase of interphase. So, again, during the S phase of interphase, this is going to be happening in the nucleus of eukaryotes only. This does not happen in prokaryotes. Prokaryotes go through a process we call binary fission, which is a little bit different uh, than the process of DNA replication. So, again, in all of our cells in our body, again, in the S phase of interphase. So, these begin what we call the origins of replication. And these origins of replication will happen uh, a lot in the strand of DNA. So you can kind of see here in my picture here, the fact that there's one, two, three, four different origins of replications in one strand of DNA. And all this does is it helps make the process go faster, which is really what this is all about, trying to expedite this process, make this thing work. So the cool thing about all of these, the interesting part about all these origins of replications is the fact that they are very rich in A and T bonds, those A and T base pairs. They have lots of A's and T base pairs in them. Now, let me ask this question from last week. Why is the A and T base pair so important? Because they only have two bonds. Because there's a double hydrogen bond instead of the triple hydrogen bond, which is why these origin replications look for bubbles that have a lot of A and T in them, because again, it's easier to break apart than breaking apart the triple bond of C and G. That's the only reason they're rich in A and T. Okay? So we're gonna get this origin replication. We're gonna open this thing up. So what I've tried to do is I've shown you then, right, an origin, a strand with the different origin replication bubbles in there. Then what I've tried to do is to then show you what's going on in one of those. That makes sense? So this box here is gonna be right down here now. So as we go through this process then, again, you can kind of see that we've got many different bubbles and they actually work in both directions. So one strand will replicate this way, the other strand will replicate this way. So when we get both strands working together, right, bubbles will always be working towards each other, which again makes this process go faster. So again, we're looking at eukaryotic chromosomes, have many bubbles. The prokaryotic one only has one bubble because it's circular and it's much smaller DNA and they only need one replication bubble for a prokaryotic cell. Now, let's get into this one. So here's where then our names kind of come into play for us. Let's see if I can find a place to put this bucket so that all of this can be seen. So there we go. Right, so this is where your chart's gonna come into play, is the fact that we've got all these different names for proteins and enzymes which are doing things in this process. So the first thing is helicase is going to unwind and separate the DNA into two strands by breaking then those hydrogen bonds. So that's the job of helicase. Here's helicase, it's my red square. And all it's doing is it's acting like a zipper. So if you think about, and I was very fortunate enough to wear my zipper today on my sweater, right? All helicase is, it's the zipper pull. And if you pull the zipper down, you're going to open up the zipper. That's what helicase's job does, is to then just open up and pull apart the DNA. Once helicase has pulled apart the DNA, now we need to use these single-stranded binding proteins, these SSBPs. And what they do is they help to keep the DNA open. So if you think back to my example of my sweater here, right, that the helicase is the zipper pull, what the zipper's gonna wanna do is the zipper's gonna wanna then close back up behind it. And so while helicase goes down and continues to unzip, the DNA is going to want to bind itself back up again. So what the SSBPs do is just 
attach onto the DNA so they can't then reclose. They just keep them open. So that's what the SSBPs are doing. They help to stabilize the DNA to keep it open and unwound is our SSBPs. Yes, ma'am. So for helicase, you would write open up and pull apart. Helicase unzips the DNA into two strands. So I'll keep this board out for you. I've also written them on the windows as well. I'll pull up the blinds, you know, when it's a little bit warmer out, sorry, tomorrow, so you can see them. So all it changes, all these things here are also written on the windows back there so you can see them. So, so far we've got two of them, helicase and the single strand binding proteins, and we really haven't done anything to the DNA yet except for opening it up. Questions so far? I'm going to continue to keep asking these things because I want to make sure you understand them all. All right, the next one then is another enzyme called topoisomerase. And topoisomerase, what it does is it works out in front of the helicase. So here's the helicase. It's going to go this way along our DNA strand. And then the topoisomerase, what it does is it helps to unkink the DNA see here in my picture, right? The DNA is going to have this double helical shape to it. And what the topoisomerase is doing is it straightens out the DNA. It unwinds the DNA out ahead of the helicase to straighten it out. It basically makes this helicase's job easier to do because it's straightening out the DNA. So as you can kind of see here, the DNA has got that twist to it. And uh, what the topoisomerase does is it comes along and it untwists it. Remember, DNA has a twist, so for every 10 base pairs, you get a complete turn. What the topoisomerase does is untwists it. So it makes it into a straight line there. All right, so that's our green circle, topoisomerase. So we've got a green circle, our red square, and we've got our pink circles that make up then our enzyme so far working towards DNA replication. So that's, and I kind of put these pictures in here every once in a while just to kind of see where we're going. We've just done numbers one and two. Helicase unwinds, unzips the DNA, the single strand binding proteins, keep it open. Ideally, there should be a topoisomerase right there in front of it as well, which would be then to straight out the DNA in front of it. All right. So before we can add new strands to DNA to it, we've got to add this RNA primer. This is where Luke's question came in. So what's the role of primase then? And that's the enzyme primase. Adds an RNA base to start DNA. The DNA needs it as a foundation. So our RNA primase, or primase, is going to be our brown squares here. And all the primase does is it comes in and it's going to throw down one or two RNA bases. Now, why RNA? because RNA is single-stranded and DNA is double-stranded. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but we can't add DNA. DNA has to be added to something else. Primer or primase is going to go along and it's going to add in then. Tell Jerry he was very forgetful today. All right, so RNA primer or primase is going to come and it's going to add in our RNA bases. Now you can see here in my picture, one on one strand, it's just going to add one of them and it's going to continuously keep making more nucleotides, which is where we get the replication part on one strand. On the other side, we're going to get multiple RNA primers in there. And we're going to talk about what those changes are, why we have them in a second. Here. Then DNA polymerase is going to come along and it's going to add in new nucleotides. So DNA polymerase is going to be here, this blue square. All it's going to do is it's going to keep adding in new nucleotides. Now remember, the nucleotide is the sugar, the phosphate, and the base. 
And so this is the part, our, the DNA polymerase, that's actually making the new DNA, is DNA polymerase. So again, DNA polymerase adds new nucleotides to make new strands and adds it to the RNA. We're literally almost done with this process. There's not a whole lot more going on. So we've got a little, come back to our uh, strand here. The DNA, the leading strand is continuously synthesized. We'll talk about why we have a leading and a lagging strand in just a second here. So this is kind of the important part. The DNA polymerase can only add new nucleotides to the three prime end of the DNA. I would do this, circle, highlight, whatever. And that DNA can only be built in a five prime to three prime direction. DNA can only be built in a five prime to three prime direction. So what that means in this process is this, is that What this is going to go back and do is it adds in in a five prime to three prime. We can only build them in. Now here's the reason why we can only build in a five prime to three prime direction. This goes back to our nucleotide picture, which we saw before. So here's our nucleotide. We've got our carbons that are counted. And remember I told you to keep the three prime and the five prime carbon important. So here's our five prime, which is going to be attached to the phosphate. The three prime carbon, you'll notice, is open. It's free. There's nothing attached to it. So when we talk about that we can only add to a three prime end, what that means is that when we talk about then adding in something else, the next nucleotide, if you think of this whole structure and adding another one below it, this phosphate will attach to a three prime carbon. So this phosphate will go like this to then our carbon, right? And here's our three prime carbon. And the same thing down below here is that this will attach to the phosphate of the next nucleotide below it. Now because of that, that's the reason why we can only build DNA in certain directions. we get a lead, what we call a leading strand and a lagging strand. The leading strand builds DNA from five prime to three prime. And so when we're building our new strand, the leading strand is always going towards what we call our replication bubble. As helicase continues to unzip, the leading strand just continues to keep following right along. Because the three prime end will always be open to add new nucleotides here. The lagging strand, though, on the other hand, the three prime one that's open will go five to three. So here's the RNA, and it builds then in discontinuously. So as helicase continues to open up, now DNA polymerase will come in and add going this way now. And so it does it then discontinuously to the process. I'll show you those differences in a little bit here. So as you can kind of see, and I, this is one of the reasons why I like this picture, is because we have a three prime or an original strand and a five prime in our original strand. But when we build them, we're always going five to three on the new strand. So our new strand is always going to be going towards replication bubble. On the new one, though, on the lagging, it always goes five to three, which goes back this way. So that's why we can only build going backwards then. So that's why we end up with what we call a leading strand and a lagging strand in the process. And technically this is where I was going to end for today. It was somewhat setting the stage for you. And I didn't want to overload the information with you so that I can do the rest of this stuff then on Wednesday. Okay? Can you keep on going then? Huh? Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Okay.
Square and Sapper. 